The sequel is never better than the original, but with these new Karen markers? Uh, this sequel might be better. Karen markers pigment deco brush. The original here are called Brush Marker Pro, and they're my favorite. But could these ones be better? It's kind of blowing my mind. Ooh, brand new Karen markers. These are beautiful. I'm so excited to review them and show you. I'm Sarah from Ensign Insights and I love Karen markers. They are my favorite and these are the new ones. These are acrylic, so they're pigment based. Karen markers did send these to me to test out. This video is not sponsored, but they did send these to me. They are brand new. They just came out May 28th. Ooh, let's look at these. Oh, they're so pretty. So there's a little swatch card right here. And then there's some explanation here of how to use them. This feels so professional. I just love this. And then you know what this is? This is a customization kit. So if you want to choose a different set of colors, like grab the colors that you want to make your own box, then you re-swatch on here to stick on here and then this part right here it is to re swatch this how cool is that i mean they thought of everything so then you can have your custom boxes with exactly the colors you like when karen markers told me that they had new markers i thought there's no way i'm gonna like them as much because the brush marker pro is my all-time favorite brush marker but then i tried them and no way. <laughs> I might like them more. One of the main reasons that the Brush Marker Pros have been my favorite is for the brush tip. It's pretty firm and so it helps you to have a little more control over your lettering but it's also very flexible and really high quality. So this is a really old I mean this is probably two years old at least and it's a little bit Frayed, it's starting to because I use it on watercolor paper, but it still is really, really good quality. So what I love about these new ones is that it's the same brush tip. See, look at that. But now we have the option of having acrylic paint. This one would be like using watercolor and then the new ones are pigment based. They're going to be more light fast, but with the same brush tip. Look at this. Okay, so let's see how this does on black paper. So of course the Brush Marker Pro, it doesn't work on black paper, right? So how about the pigment? Ooh, look at that. This black paper that I'm using is just cardstock from Michaels. That is really nice. Okay, let's swatch these. As I pull these out to swatch, let me tell you something I noticed in just my quick test of them. So in the instructions, it says they need to be shaken a lot. And one thing I noticed is that some of the markers have the ink coming out just fine right away. And then some of them, it was like a little streaky or something. And it was kind of a cool look actually, if that's what you're going for. But if you're not, what I realized is I just had to keep shaking it even more and then that went away so i think that is something this ink is a lot thicker than brush marker pro and since these ones are a little bit thicker it's really important to keep them shaken up and if you do notice problems with the ink coming out just shake it again a lot like more than you think you're supposed to Another thing I want to mention is that I've noticed that these pigment deco brush markers are mostly the same colors as the Brush Marker Pro besides a few differences. The Brush Marker Pro has 72 colors including the neon markers and these new pigment deco brush markers have 80 colors. So there are a few more and some of them here and there are different. Also, they are creamier which is a weird way to describe it, but comparing two colors side by side, the acrylic makes it look a little creamier. 
because they're pigment, they are more expensive. This is normal for all markers and all art supplies everywhere. Pigment just makes it a little more expensive. But if you want to create long lasting pieces, professional pieces, this will definitely be worth it. They do have different buying options. So if you only wanted to buy the pastel box or I think they have a set of just three boxes too. So if you're not ready to invest in all of the boxes, you could just get one or two of the boxes. And another thing about them being acrylic, you can use them on so many different things. And I'm going to show you all the different things that they can do. Some of the things that it says that it will work on is metal, glass, plastic, and fabric. So I'm going to test it on all of them. It does say it won't be totally permanent unless you add some varnish on after. And I'm not going to add varnish, so let's see how permanent it is. These are things I don't care about ruining. If it does end up being permanent, let's test it. So here's the fabric. I just wrote the word love and it says to make it permanent on the fabric to iron it first before washing it so i'm going to try ironing a little section i'm just going to iron the word love and not the heart okay let's see how this does So it did come out a little bit. I think the heart came out more than where I ironed it, but even where I ironed it, it kind of is coming out a little bit. I don't think I could get the heart totally out. I was actually scrubbing this together like as if I was trying to get out a stain. So I'm not sure if I would actually, you know, make a shirt out of this, but I definitely wouldn't accidentally <laughs> get this on my clothes because it might stain. All right, let's try it on the plastic. Ooh. Okay, that was really nice. I'm just gonna let that dry and we'll see how it looks. So this is just a baby wipe. Let's see how it does. Oh, it's actually stays on pretty well. And it removes pretty nicely. I do have to press pretty hard. So it seems like it could be something that you could add on and change out. I don't think it would have come off if it hadn't been for those wet wipe. Now let's do it on this metal. This little box is where I keep my actual calligraphy nibs. Okay, it started fading out a little bit right there. So I just shook up my marker a little bit more. Some of these, it's not totally sticking onto the metal. Okay, the second time around it is. I wonder if I just had to shake it up even more. So dry, that's not gonna come off very easily. Wow, I actually have to scrub pretty hard with this one. I'm going to try rubbing alcohol. Okay, that's coming off faster with the rubbing alcohol. This is difficult. <laughs> so definitely test your surface. If you want it to be permanent, then this is great. So there's still these little specks that I'm sure I could get off if I scrubbed a little bit more, but I'm just going to leave it because I'm actually not too worried about this and, you know, I might redo it with something else. Okay, now let's try it on glass. Oh, my yellow touched my orange and it's bleeding into it. That's kind of cool. Okay, this works really well, so let's let this one dry. Let's try taking it off of the glass. Oh yeah, see, so doesn't come off when it's dr my finger is dry but it comes off pretty easily with the wet wipe I always like testing out rainbows so this first one is just with the brush marker pro 
I just wanted to show you the difference that with the Brush Marker Pro, it's as if you're using liquid watercolor, so it's a dye-based liquid watercolor. And then versus using pigment deco brush, because it has that pigment, there's going to be more texture and you can kind of see the little pigments as it dries a little bit. It was a little bit harder to get it off of the plastic palette that I was using and that's just because it was ready to be permanent on the palette. So I wouldn't let it dry too long if you're going to use this method. I did do it again on a plastic bag and that was a little bit easier because then I didn't have to scrub my palette afterwards to get it off. So here's the one I made with the Brush Marker Pro and here's the one I made with the pigment deco brush. So now the test would be how light fast this one is. Okay, this is crazy. I put this in my window in the direct sunlight for maybe five to seven days. This is the Brush Marker Pro and the pink especially faded. The other one's not as much, but look, no change at all with the pigment brush pens. That is so crazy. So I did all three of these. So after doing all of these, I was thinking how this isn't watercolor. This is acrylic paint. How would I blend acrylic paint? This is Bristol smooth paper and I just blended right on top with the markers so that it was kind of grabbing. It's not this like completely smooth blend. It kind of like is this textured on top of each other. It definitely looks more like acrylic paint. And then this one too, I decided to just do two markers only because I wanted to see if I could get a smoother blend if they were farther apart. And I think that turned out really nice. I Now I wanna try more of this type of blending. Now I just want to show you how these markers show up on white paper versus how they show up on black paper in the same colors. So you can see on white paper they're really really vibrant. They are kind of creamy like I said earlier, but they show up great on white. And they also show up great on black paper. I am so excited about this because these aren't metallic markers. They're just regular colors, but they show up so well on black paper. I'm so excited about all the possibilities. So my final thoughts, I absolutely think these are worth it. If you're ready to invest in higher quality professional brush pens, and especially if you want to be working on other materials besides just paper, I hope this helps. If you have questions, let me know. And I've created a playlist right here for all of my Karen Marker reviews and videos. I think you'll really like that. I'll see you there.